Corporate finance practice problem using Excel. Coefficient of variation and investment risk. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet and would like to follow along, note that we are in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Information on the left-hand side, we're going to populate that into the blue area on the right-hand side. So we're thinking about potential investments here, investment options one through five, and we've already calculated the expected return and the standard deviation. Now we're looking at the calculation of the coefficient of, vari of variation, coefficient of variation. That's usually going to be helping us to assess the level of risk that will be involved. So the expected return, as you've seen in prior presentations, typically being kind of like the average return. So if you want to think about that calculation, take a look at some prior presentations, as well as the standard deviation, which helps us to kind of think about the spread from the mean. Again, to get more concepts on that, take a look at some prior presentations where we calculate that. Now, although the standard deviation gives us some idea about the spread from the mean, uh, it, it's not something that we can typically be comparing to different investments that have, say, different returns on it. So what we want to do is calculate the coefficient of variation. So let's think about that. that that's going to be calculated as the standard deviation divided by the uh, expected return. And we have the decimals on place here. So we've got the three decimals. If you need decimals, you go to the numbers group, add some decimals here. It's going to be rounded about the 0.765. Now that number makes more sense when we compare it to other kind of options that we have. So if we go on through here, do the same thing, standard deviation divided by the expected return. This will be the standard deviation divided by the expected return. This will be the standard deviation divided by the expected return. And finally, the standard deviation divided by the expected return. Now, looking at these on the expected return itself, then, of course, if we were just to see these in total, the higher the better, right? We would say, okay, five looks good. And then four, these two are basically the same. And then one here. But then we also want to think about what's going to be the the risk that's going to be away, meaning if these are the mean or the average, how likely is it that we're going to be away from the average and how can we compare that likeliness to other investments, even if they're not basically of the same size. So we can then, that's where the, the coefficient of variation goes. And so which is going to be the one that is least risky here, least to greatest risk, this one with the lowest uh, coefficient would typically be the least because it has the least you know variation from the center point and then we're going to say this one the next one up is going to be two and then we have this one is going to be the next one up on three and then we have four here and five up top five up top so there we have it so then again that would another concept that you'd want to take into play so if you were very risk averse then you, the one the one here is the first option that you would have even though you know you got to compare the expected return and the level of risk and then number two, you have uh, you have the next level up here. This is at 31,000 and uh, one is at 31,002. So between these two, you would think that you'd want to be picking basically one since you have the same kind of expected or average return and you have less risk involved in it, less, less uh, movement away from that from that center point. So you would think between these two, you might choose the, the first one. And then if and the third one out in terms of risk is going to be here. So notice as we go up in terms of uh, risk, you would think that if you're going to take on more risk, it would be in order to get a higher expected return, right? If I'm going to take on more risk, I'm, the only reason I would want to take on more risk or I might want to take on more risk is because the expected return uh, for doing so would then be higher. And then so notice that this one, you've got an expected return of 50 this one an expected return of 176 which is quite a bit higher and this one up five that which is the highest ranking for the coefficient variation has the most risk involved in it so that one doesn't look like a very good option at all considering the fact that you could get one with an expected return possibly down here that would be higher and have a you know a lower risk amount at even even this one with the higher or the highest expected return with the lower risk so you can see it, it kind of it, what you would normally expect is the level of risk goes up and possibly the the level of return goes up and as the level of risk goes up we might be more willing then of course to take to take i mean as the level of return expected return goes on we might up we might be able to 
take on or might want to take on more risk. If the expected return goes up and the risk goes up, goes um, down, or if the expected return uh, goes down and the risk goes up, then, then of course, we would want to basically not take on more risk if we don't get any better <laughs> return results possibly for, from it. So that would be the general idea, and you can kind of see that happen in here. We got the first one would be the 31. Again, the second one, notice it didn't go up here even though the, the risk went up. So again, might not choose that one. Of these two, might choose the first one. And then number three, as the risk went up, the expected return goes up. And then we got the expected return goes up quite a bit as the risk goes up too. And then again, one here up top is kind of the outlier, doesn't really fit in the system. It's probably one we wouldn't be considering given the fact, again, the expected return is much lower and we can, fit, we can pick basically, you know, any of, any of these items down below and have a better expected return at a lower uh, level of risk.